Hello everyone, this is Frank DeMar from the End Times Research Ministry. I'm the author of the prophecy book called The Last Chronicles of Planet Earth. And if you just found my YouTube channel, I'd like to invite you to go over to my website. You're looking at the front page of my website right now. And at that website, you'll be able to download my book today for free. It's updated and you can get it for absolutely no cost whatsoever. If you don't know how to access my book, when you get to my front page, as you see here, just scroll down and you're going to see the front and cover, and the back cover of my book. Just scroll down a little bit and you'll see a link right here. And you can see July 28th, that was as of yesterday, I updated some of the news that came in. And so all you have to do is click this link and you can download the book today for free. So to start off today in this first video that I'm going to be putting up at my website, I wanted to start off with what the Lord Jesus Christ warned us about in the last days concerning famine. There's a lot of scriptures about this, but I'm going to give you a few of them. But what we do know is that we're headed for the tribulation period. And right now we're in the birth pangs before we get to the beginning of the tribulation period. And we know that during this time that there's going to be famine. We're told this. There's going to be a food crisis. Jesus shows this to us in the Revelation where we see on this horse, this person that's carrying the balances. And we know that this is in reference to, obviously, the food crisis and famines and death and so forth. So let's read Revelation chapter 6 verses 5 and 8. If you don't know anything about how I work in my ministry, I think it's really, really important, first of all, to give the word of the Lord so that the people who don't know understand Bible prophecy may not know anything about it. They're going to get the word of the Lord, the warning that Christ gave to us, what we should be looking for. And let me just remind you, it's a command to keep on the watch. So in this case, I'm going to read Revelation chapter 6, verses 5 and 8, and you'll see why. And when he had opened the third seal, I heard the third beast say, Come and see, and I beheld, and lo, a black horse. And he that sat on him had a pair of balances in his hand. And I heard the voice in the midst of the four beasts say, A measure of wheat for a penny, and three measures of barley for a penny, and see thou hurt not the oil and the wine. And when he had opened up the fourth seal, I heard the voice of the fourth beast say, Come and see. And I looked and beheld a pale horse, and his name that sat on him was Death, and Hell followed with him. And power was given unto them over the fourth part of the earth to kill with a sword, and, now get this, and with hunger, and with death, and with the beast of the earth. So there's a lot going on in this scripture, but one of the main focuses, hunger and death, starvation. So that tells us there's going to be a major food crisis in the last days. And of course, we see not only from Revelation chapter 6, verses 5 and 8, that people are going to have to work all day long, obviously, for one small meal. You'll see the small meal of wheat and barley that he mentions there. But also, Jesus gives us some information about the people that were sent out into the field to work, and at the end of the day, they were paid a denarius. So they worked all day long for this coin, this Roman coin, denarius. We know that when these seals are opened up, and of course, the first seven seals, this isn't God's wrath being poured out on the people. This is satanic work that is coming against the people of the world, and especially those who love our Lord Jesus Christ. And so expect famine, that's what we're told in the scriptures, and of course it's leading up to this food crisis. Now why am I giving you this information? Well, you'll see. I'm going to tie in the new article that just came in today. Now here's another scripture, and then we'll go right to the report. Matthew 24, 7, the Lord talks about the nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom, and there will be, there you go, famines and earthquakes in various places. So again, he lumps a lot of the signs together in this one verse, but I'm going to center right now 
and famines, and then later I'll get into earthquakes as well. Now, one of the things that I've been warning about over the years, for those who have been coming to my website, you know that I've kept telling you, you're going to see more news about the bees dying off. And of course, this becomes very, very important when we see the mass bees dying off because these are the ones that pollinate the crops for us. And without the crops being pollinated, you have no food or the food is going to be drastically in decline and when food is in decline the prices go up and there you have people who would have to be working all day long just for food and that's what we see in the revelation now one of the most influential people one of the best minds ever was Albert Einstein and Einstein said in one of his quotes you could look it up if the bee disappeared from the face of the globe then man would only have four years left. And we're already seeing the bee population dwindling down. So what Albert Einstein warned about, we see the beginning stages of this, that the bee population disappearing. Now keep in mind, if we have effects on this earth, like intense heat, killing off the crops, we have massive floods, for example, also killing off the, the crops. We have war because in Matthew 24, 7, the Lord said that there would be nation against nation, kingdom against kingdom. There would be war. And we know when there's war, people are not planting crops and harvesting because there's too busy warring against each other. And we know that there's going to be a worldwide war during the seven-year tribulation period. And so we can see very easily how the bee population will continue to decline. And of course, as it does, you're going to have less food. It's going to cause famines. And of course, it's going to drive the food skyrocketing the prices. And so you have Revelation chapter 6 intact, where people we know will be having to work for a quart of wheat which is enough for maybe two people. And it mentions barley in Revelation chapter 6 as well. You might have a little bit more barley, but that's not much. It won't even feed a family at all. So Now when you go over to my book and you download my book, you're going to see a lot of information about the bees dying off. All the reports I have listed in my book, links there, videos, that you can go and watch all you have to do is click on the link when you get over to my website it'll take you to the videos and it'll take you to the reports about mass bee dying off in many parts of the world and just as i warned you were going to hear more news about this channel 13 you can see the news there 13 with their headline the honeybee die off could deeply affect food supply and that's what i've been warning about that's what albert einstein was warning about so I'll, there's a video that came with this I want to play this news video and I'll let them give you the information honeybees are dying off at an alarming rate and that could have a huge impact on agriculture as well as our food supply here in our states 47 percent of bee colonies died in the past year as WSTN Steve Sprazier found out researchers are scrambling to figure out why but there's no central cause that's why they all should be like that right there. But when you dive into some hives, you find trouble. Worker bees are missing. Nurse bees are eating stored honey to stay alive instead of feeding it to the young. And queens aren't laying eggs to reproduce. Well, they still start losing hives. And I, I, I could not figure out why. In beekeeper David Massengill's case, it was due to pesticide contamination from a cucumber patch where he had placed his bees for pollination services. I lost a third of the bees due to the cucumbers before I called them over there and found out that that was what the problem was. It was due to a type of nicotine-based pesticide known generically as neonicotinoids. Seeds are coated with that pesticide, which eventually transfer it to the plant and pollen to protect it from insects. But labels warn it's highly toxic to bees. It's in their system. They don't know their way back. They just they lose memory and everything. So basically, they die in the feet. 
In David's case, he caught it early. I pulled the hives off and brought them back home and started nursing them back, and they started coming back slowly a little bit. For smaller beekeepers like David, keeping an eye on a hive like this is fairly easy, but for larger beekeepers, it becomes problematic. These people that's running five, six, seven hundred these transfer trucks, there's no possible way they can do that. I mean, for time wise. But pesticides are only a small part of what's destroying bee colonies. 46.1 percent of the hives in North Carolina died off last year. Some of that die off is due to something called colony collapse disorder, where all the bees abandon the hive, leaving the babies to die. This hive right here has two large boxes. You can see down here. Back in 2006, we talked with Professor David Tarpey about research which was just starting on colony collapse disorder. <laughs> Nearly a decade later, he and his team are still at it. There have been about uh, 75 or so individual things that have been tested to see if that is the cause of colony collapse disorder and no one single factor has emerged as the smoking gun. Finding an answer, he says, is like finding a cure for cancer. It's complex. But disappearing bees aren't the only issue. Beekeepers report queens are dying mysteriously. They're supposed to live two or three years. Beekeepers are having a hard time having them live for more than one year. Dr. Tarpey's researchers are trying to figure out why, because bees are essential to our food supply. One out of every three bites of food that we eat is provided by, by bees in general. Bees pollinate about $20 million worth of crops a year here in North Carolina. Nationally, it's about $20 billion. It really came together fast from there. The bee die-off has caught the attention of the White House, where the president created a task force to develop a national strategy to promote the health of honeybees and other pollinators. I'm ecstatic, but I'm also holding my breath, because we all know that, that it's Congress that holds the purse strings. They're building their own comb. As beekeeper David Massengill says, our lives really depend on it. Once we destroy them bees, we've destroyed ourselves because we ain't going to have a food supply for us to eat. I'm Steve Sprazier, WNCN News. So there you have it. Essentially, this particular bee expert is saying the same thing that Albert Einstein said. If the bees disappear, so will the food. And if the food disappears, so will mankind. And of course, this runs parallel to exactly what Jesus shows us in the Gospels and in the book of Revelation. Now, if you want to see other information about the bee population dying off, when you're at my website, you'll see this link right here. Just click that link, and you'll see it load, and then all you have to do is scroll down, and you'll see Dying Bee Archive, and it'll give you all the information, all of the reports, and of course, I started with May 7th of 2008, filing the reports about the bees dying off. There's many, many reports showing us over the years how bad this situation is becoming. And it goes all the way back from 2008 to current to 2015. So again, this is all information that you can get for free by going over to my website today. So. Look at, here's the bottom line. If you don't know Jesus Christ, you're going to want to know him as your personal Lord and Savior because we're very, very close to the beginning of the seven-year tribulation. And if we are close to the beginning of the seven-year tribulation, you're going to want to be as close to the Lord Jesus Christ as you can be. And in order for that to happen, you have to be in his kingdom. And in order to be in his kingdom, you have to receive him as your personal Lord and Savior. So please, today give your life over to Jesus Christ. Let him save you and let the peace of the Lord fall on you and then begin to watch as the Lord has asked us to do. Keep on the watch for the signs of the redemption of our souls from Jesus Christ. That is a blessing. We know that the Lord is coming back for us. And without a question, time is short. Now, I mentioned earthquakes. In my post yesterday, I gave you a breakdown of all the recent earthquakes over the weekend. And for again, for those of you who have been coming to my website, you notice that I put up the red flag saying these big earthquakes are going to keep happening and they're going to be coming quicker and quicker. They have to because of what we see in Mark 13, 8, where the Lord told us these last day's events were going to be just as a woman with birth pangs. 
And so that's why we're starting to see all of these signs coming faster and faster. So just yesterday, as I outlined all of the weekend earthquakes, there was another earthquake again, a big earthquake, that was reported by Yahoo News. A magnitude 6.3 earthquake rattles south central Alaska. It says a magnitude 6.3 earthquake rattled the wide area of south central Alaska, including Anchorage, on Tuesday, the U.S. Geological Survey reported, but there was no immediate reports of serious damage or injuries. The tremors struck just after 6.30 p.m. Alaska time in a remote area about 40 miles south of Mount Redoubt, an active volcano near Cook Inlet, and 140 miles southwest of Anchorage, the state's largest city, the USGS said, on its website. So I'm going to add this earthquake along with the rest of the earthquakes that were shaking. And this report came out nine hours ago. Now when you look over here you're going to see related stories. They're talking about these earthquakes because there was also an earthquake in San Francisco Bay Area. You'll see the magnitude 4.0. Oklahoma has been rocking with uh, earthquakes, swarms of earthquakes, and you'll see that on ABC News again this evening as we saw it this morning on Good Morning America. And of course in Nicaragua they're on alert because according to this article it says Nicaragua alert to the phenomenon of earthquake swarms. So they've been having a lot of swarms and of course their concern is that there's going to be a big earthquake that will follow these swarms of earthquakes that are taking place. But the bottom line is we're seeing these earthquakes in various places like the Lord promised. And he also told us about these great earthquakes that we saw prophesied in Luke 21:11. It is happening at the same time when all the rest of the prophecies are taking place. Now you have a choice. You can just dismiss all of this information and live your life without Jesus Christ but that's not the best choice, I guarantee it. Or you can embrace what the Lord has shown to us by all of these signs, specific signs, and ask the Lord to be your Savior. And that would be a very, very wise decision that I'm hoping and praying that maybe my life can have a little bit of influence of tugging you in and leading you to the Lord Jesus Christ for your salvation. This is Frank DeMora. Now in closing, I just want to give you an update on little Journey. If you don't know anything about her, this little child is very, very close to our family. The, the parents are very, very close to us. And we've been asking for the people who have been coming to my YouTube channel, would they please do whatever they can to help in donating for medical procedures for little Journey. She has this protein C deficiency. She's had blood clots in her leg and her arms. She probably will have cataract surgery, although we're praying that she won't. But there's a lot of medical expenses, and the family is living in a motel next to the hospital. And I set the goal at $24,000. And so I've been keeping track of what's going on in the hope that as I plead to the people who are coming to my YouTube channel, that they would definitely give. Now when you go over to my website you'll see a link right here. Just click the link and you'll see where we're at. We're at 15,750 so we're below the goal I set up. So please whatever you can. I did mention in my last video that if each person that came to my YouTube channel I almost have 10,000 people and they only gave a dollar we would be way over that uh, goal that I have set. So please, if you haven't given yet, please consider helping this little child on a way to a normal life and continue to pray for her. As I said, we're at 15750 Now, that being said, let's add $1,000 to this mark. So we're really at 16750 because a thousand dollars was handed over to her directly so that is going to be added in this total as well so we have made an impact already just from my youtube channel those givers but we need much more please 
for a family that's very close to me, would you consider sending something? I'll have the link at my website again so that it will take you right to GoFundMe and to help Little Journey and her journey to recovery. God bless.